Hello everyone, I'm Dex here, welcome to episode 65 of Listen to Let's Play. As you can see, I'm in my industrial craft uh, room, and don't don't worry, I didn't forget that I wanted to start dealing with bees this episode, and I will. But before doing that, you might have just noticed that my current nuclear cycle is at zero, which requires replenishing. Now, I've, doing, I've been doing this for quite some time now, and it's doing awesome. But, there is something that I've noticed, uh, which I keep getting, and I'm not doing anything with. And it's actually those remnant uh, near depleted uranium cells, something, something. Uh, these guys, there we go, that's uh, what I got from my previous cycle. Uh, these guys can basically, in a very uh, kind of a long but useful process, can be turned back into uranium cells. So I think so far I've used a little more than a stack of uranium cells, and from those I got uh, 28 back. So approximately, I think 40% or so from what I'm using is what I'm getting back for them, and it's not bad, but if I'm gonna leave them in the current state, there is nothing actually I can do with them, I need to actually go through the process of creating them into those uranium cells again. So there is basically a three-stage uh, process to do this. Uh, two of those stages are pretty much jokes, the, medium, the middle stage is the actual thing. Uh, basically the first and the third stage is simply combining uh, the near depleted cell with some coal dust. So let's quickly macerate some coal. It's gonna be actually a lot faster if I quickly hijack uh, this macerator to do the job for me. It's quickly going to finish. Uh, now the thing is, the way you do it, you basically combine one near depleted cell with one coal dust and you get the depleted isotope cell. Now as you can see, the depleted isotope cell has a damage value of 9999. Uh, basically a zero durability, and the way you make it uh, earn durability back is placing it in a reactor uh, near other uh, heat emitting uh, components, basically other cells, and it will kind of absorb their heat, and eventually once the durability reaches zero, uh, it's gonna end up being a whole new, uh, I think it's called re-enriched, or is it... yeah, there we go. You're gonna get the re-enriched uranium cell, and with this one you again just combine it with another coal dust, that's basically the third step, and you get uranium cell back. So, uh, the way I'm going to do this is because unfortunately my current setup doesn't actually allow me um, to add any, the, any of those depleted uranium cells to the process without unbalancing the entire thing, what I'm going to do is actually create another reactor altogether and also by doing that I'm gonna double my EU production. Uh, I'm think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna do this off screen uh, because you guys know how to handle those uh, thermocraft blocks again. So instead of just replenishing this uh, reactor, I'm gonna first build the, I'm gonna expand the room, build the second reactor and turn it on. And by the way, if you guys know the why it's causing, uh, please let me know. F like over s over some single over some periods of time, sometimes the Lapatron crystal just disappears. I've actually replenished this my Lapatron crystals uh, storage here multiple times already, and they just keep for some reasons suddenly disappearing. And I don't know, maybe it's the inner buffer of the filter going crazy or uh, somewhere in the line of just items, <laughs> I don't know, they just disappear and it's actually quite annoying. If you guys know why it's happening, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, let me actually get the new reactor built, expand on the room and get the new components that I need. i actually gonna use a setup I found uh, online, uh, which can you, you guys be able to see it in just a moment. So let me get everything that I need and I'll be right back. Okay, if you guys remember the previous episode that said something about uh, the Thumbcroft uh, research recipes for some unknown reason, the same way they appeared the previous time. Now I'm opening my Thumbinomicon and they're not here. So, the same way they appeared, the same way they disappeared. No clue why or how or when. But yeah, magically, Thumbcroft is magical. Okay, so I quickly expanded the room, uh, made it just a little bit bigger, and connected both of them to the same MFSU. Now keep in mind that actually my remote sensor will only 
uh, control this one, at least give me information about this one, and not my other one. So it's something that uh, you should know. I mean, I know it, but in case you will be interested, something you should know as well. Um, I'm adding as well here uh, that information system to make sure that the this reactor doesn't, doesn't overheat. I'm making it again a temperature of 5000. And connecting it to a NOT gate. Actually, it's connect it here and also both of them are basically connected to the same network with the MFSU and I actually got to that point because when I, my Lapatrons kept disappearing this MFSU actually filled up and it stopped the reactor so this way I'm actually controlling um, everything here I may want to actually also isolate the signal here with a repeater so if this one is f uh, at 5,000 temperature, it wouldn't shut down this one. Uh, yeah, actually, let me do that. Let me get also two repeaters. And also, let me actually start preparing the design. It's slightly different. It's obviously different, but it's also using different component than what I've used before in my original reactor. Okay, so about uh, two repeaters actually to slightly modify this uh, system. So. Uh, only signals coming from the MFSU will go to both because obviously if this MFSU is outputting a signal that means it's full so generating any more energy will be wasted and those signals coming from uh, the thermal monitors will only go towards uh, their respective reactors because uh, yeah I don't really if this one is overheating I don't want to shut off this one because they're not connected and also because of the slight difference between their design, uh, this one actually might overheat even by accident or intended, I'm not exactly sure. I did some small testing with it, but I didn't actually uh, see it operating fully. So let's get started creating the components. Okay, so the design I'm going for, I'm basically taking out directly out of the industrial craft forums. They're usually a good source of information, anything industrial craft obviously and they're going to use two components that I've used before and one that I haven't uh, they're going to use the component heat vents those are uh, these guys component heat vents those are the ones that dissipate heat from the surrounding components I'm going to use the overclocked uh, heat vent that's the one that basically drawing heat from the reactor and dispensing it out to the air and the new component is this one, the component heat exchanger. That's actually an interesting component that if I may incorporate it right in my uh, current design for my current reactor, it may actually be more efficient, but it will require some testing. I'm not going to do this this episode. Um, but in this, uh, in com a combination of design with those guys and some uranium cells, those actually create something called uh, a hybrid reactor. It's a combination between a breeder, breeder are the ones that basically breed the near depleted cells, and a combination of this, and basically a normal reactor. So you guys know how to make those, and again, all of them are not stackable, so it's actually quite a boring and annoying process. So I'm just going to get started and show you how the design itself when it's all done. Okay, so everything is prepared, and let's actually take you through the process of setting it up. So first, uh, I'm first going to actually replenish my original uh, reactor. And remember that this one is using 10 cells, 10 uranium cells basically, 4, 2, 2, and 2, basically a total of 10. And this one generates 220 EU per tick. I uh, may not, not, not see it, but if you recall correctly from my panel, this is what it, this one does. The other uh, reactor, because it's also supposed to do something else, this one uses 12 cells, actually generates slightly more, but not as efficient. For 12 cells, this one generates 230 EU per tick. So obviously it's not as efficient, but the thing is, this is a hybrid uh, reactor, which actually does two things at a time. It actually also breeds uh, nuclear, new, new uranium cells. So the setup is like so. First, there is a crossing, like the overclocked heat vents are in every other uh, spot on the grid, like a checkerboard. 
leaving these five slots basically these three will be the breeder the being the new enriched cells and this one will be my 12 uranium cells uh, so for the rest are those guys which again they take heat from the actor uh, and from themselves and remove it and next up are the component heat vents So right now, basically, I'm pretty much copying the design that I'm seeing on the website, but this, of course, can be changed if you can understand what's going on. So these component vents go here, 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 and here. And now the new component, the component heat exchanger, their job is to move heat from around them. So the thing, the, the way they work is if, for example, I place this component heat vent hit right here, it will basically combine uh, those four overclocked heat vents to the same kind of uh, network. And I'm air, air quoting here because this is not exactly the right uh, definition, but they're kind of on the same network because it will take heat from more heated vents and then dissipate it to other less heated vents and so on. So the idea here basically to create the ne a network of all of the components to be networked together. If you can see, those three are not connected because of this one, and those three are not connected because of this one. So basically this one is now connecting to this. And if I connect this one, now those three are connected, and this one as well, and so on and so forth, basically making all of the components connected to the same network together. So theoretically all of them are connected and should be balanced. And this is why what I said previously, I think if I actually incorporate a new uh, component which I haven't used before, I may be able to make my previous one more efficient, but I'm really going to skip that for now. And right here will be the depleted isotope cells, and the rest is simply the uranium cells themselves, which generate energy and heat, and you can see the durability of the depleted isotope cells slowly going down. Now obviously this one creates slightly more, but it uses a lot more uranium cells. But the overall result is that I'm going to uh, get some isotope cells back. It's actually overall in the very long term it's more efficient, because otherwise I have no use for those guys. And I'm generating more energy in the short term. So energy is being created faster. And you may see that unlike here where the durability is always on the max value, right here it's kind of slightly going up and down and being moved around but again in the long term it should everything should balance out so now i can finally start dealing with bees all right now since i do have a ton of other stone bees and the i think valiant bees i still would like to create a scoop to be able to create a more a larger variety of bees there were some snow hives nearby and some jungle hives and so on now again, as I said, I do have a ton of those steadfast drones and valiant princesses and all of those rocky princesses as well. But I just, I would like to have a larger variety of uh, bees to choose from. So if I'm not mistaken, there was uh, a desert hive uh, somewhere around here, which I didn't uh, touch yet. There we go, there it is. So I'm going to have some desert bees. Also got a comb out of it, apparently. Also on my way to finding some more bees, quickly taking a look here in these guys. This one, as you can see, is using the frames, the untreated frames. Those are the most basic ones, I think. And it can also solves me proven frames, which are a better version you can actually only get from villagers. It's not the best frame. Uh, you can see there are a bunch of frames. Some are from equivalent exchange, not equivalent exchange, Thumbcraft. Some are just normal. Uh, forestry and a bunch of things I think yeah the simple most simple one is just stick and string and then the more complicated you want to go the different ones you get okay night is falling down and it's actually kind of a good thing because for some reason beehives emit light so, as you can see, there you go, it's much easier to find them, and I also saw one there, unless it's a torch that I left there. It's actually a lot easier to find them this way. So, let's see if this one is, yeah, there you go, another beehive. A lot easier to find them at night, actually, it's quite a little bit silly, but 
it's quite good. Another one, again. So I'm getting a nice amount of snowy bees. And I do have a lot of stone bees. A lot of those simple bees, kind of. This, the non-special ones. I'm going to see more light here. Okay, not just from lava, actually. Another snowy bee. But the more variety, the more basic variety I begin with, it's easier for me to be create some mutations. So, just collecting them for now. Actually, let's start with what I have right now. Okay, so actually I want to create the Bealyzer. It's a very convenient tool. It's actually a must if you really are into bees, which will let me uh, look into their genome and everything. But until I don't have some uh, honey drops, I don't really have a use for it because it, it's a must. You got, you got to have honey drops to actually power it on. So for now, I'm not going to actually create any. Clearly, my red power frame is still working. That's a good thing. So let's begin with the Valiant ones. Let's begin with the Valiant Princess. A steadfast drone. I'm actually not sure what am I doing, by the way. I'm just guessing here. And a Rocky Drone. And a Rocky Princess. And let's collect the Apiaries, which I left here. Still didn't collect them. The impregnated casing actually didn't make the, the Apiaries yet. It would be a good idea to actually do that finally. I'm going to need some wood and some wood panels. Should have, yeah, I should have a problem with that. Six panels exactly are enough for two Apiaries, and I can create something. Now, I hope though that the stone ones are good in this uh, in this environment because often, more often than not, they're, the bees are very picky on what envir environment they're in. So let's try a Valiant Princess with a steadfast drone. Let them breed into some sort of queen. And let's see. Uh, They're not complaining, usually they're complaining if something is wrong, but I should place some flowers around the area. It's always a good idea to have flowers nearby the bees, make them makes them happy. And also I'm gonna add frames in just a second. Not the red power frames, but those frames that sit here. Let's add the second apiary for the stone bees, the rocky bees see how they're doing if they even like that environment they might not very be very happy about it yeah they don't seem to complain it's not so awesome that i don't have them analyzed i'm not sure what environment they're looking for but it usually if they're, it's the wrong environment it usually says so and also there are those b particles so it seems fine um okay let's create the actual frames i want to create some of the thumbcraft frames Let's see which, which frames do I want to create. I think I've researched all of them. Uh, I think I'm simply going to start with this one. With this resilient frame. Simply makes it last longer. Make it make them a little bit work faster. Uh, I just require some this from the aura. Very simple, but I don't really I don't really am interested in anything else. So let's create a couple of those. Actually, a bunch of those. I'm going to need a lot of lignum. A lot of bestiola. And a lot of permutatio. So let's get what I need. Okay, now since those frames are being consumed slightly always, I'm just going to start and create a bunch of those just to begin with. So I think 64 will give me basically 8. And this will give me 9. So I'm going to have a spare of 3. So let's set up the recipe. All of them begin with the actual... Just making sure here. You actually need to have... A basic normal frame, untreated frame to begin with. And the recipe for this one, as I've seen uh, previously in the bee villager, basically just sticks and string. So just creating again just a basic amount to begin with because again they're going to be consumed. Now I don't, I'm not exactly sure how long does the special uh, special frames last, the one from Thumbcraft, but I'm going to assume they're not going to last forever. Unfortunately, they do not stack as usual. Okay. 
So the recipe is very simple. Apparently I have a lot of lignum. Actually I should have a ton of lignum coming, think of it. So oh, I have to do it one at a time though. And every time it's going to be requiring me eight. Okay, I do have a lot of... I have enough. It's going to be a slightly boring process though. Yep, it's going to be quite boring. Okay, bear it back. Okay, just crafted my last magic frame. And now, to actually create the super frame, I'm going to need some iron, which I for forgot to bring, obviously. And again, wood, permutate you, and the bestiola aspects. So let's get that iron stuff. For some reason, also, uh, I'm not be I'm not collecting any spare aspects, and I don't really like that. I think my alembics are contained have some unused stuff. I think if I shift right click, yeah, I just it just it just get dissipated into the aura, which I prefer doing because I'm wasting other useful stuff. I'm not sure what this one. Oh, I'm out of files. Yeah, that's why I'm not collecting any. That's silly. Okay, let's get some more files then. Now, that's actually quite unfortunate because I just forgot about it and it's slightly annoying. Yeah, now he's collecting again. Um, the good thing, at least, I know for a fact that in the future version of Thumbcraft, um, there is an upgraded uh, golem, upgraded wax golem, specifically designed for this purpose only. You actually craft him uh, specifically with a jar in hand so he knows what to do. It's actually quite awesome. But then again, until then, I can't really... It's not an option. Okay, so 8 string. And 12 permutatio. Ooh, I'm going to need a lot more than I brought. Gives me 1. Okay, again, build back. Okay, so I ran out of string pretty much midway, um, but I did manage to get uh, exactly six. So I'm gonna have three of those. Actually, you know what? I should really would like to bring one of those crystal clusters, or actually a bunch, just to make sure that I don't run out. I did replace one of those here because I'm sometimes using, just like now creating stuff, and I would like to keep this one fully charged. So uh, let's bring uh, two of those earth earth clusters crystals so it's going to replenish the these in the area slowly because those frames are going to slightly consume them a bit even going to help me create the okay this one was unsuccessful got three got, sorry got nothing but just a rocky princess and drone again maybe the place isn't so good after all okay so i'm going to place the resilient frames here they basically should start taking durability very, very, very slowly. Okay, this one has been a lot more productive. Give me four cocoa combs, and this one's still nothing. Okay, so they are supposed to be taking durability slowly over time, and basically, like the Thermodynamicon said, make the bees work uh, faster. Um, and pretty much wear, wear out slower compared to other type of... Uh, there we go, yeah, it's taking damage slowly, but definitely makes them do stuff faster. Okay, so what can I do with Coco Combs? First, I'd actually like to clear my inventory slowly, slightly, and also get rid of stuff that I don't need to clear out my inventory. Okay, so what can I do with cocoa combs or basically any type of comb i can uh, create them but i don't really want to basically the centrifuge centrifuge is what i actually need uh, this is again another forestry machine that will require build craft power so obviously gonna place it here uh, centrifuge which it's basically only purpose is to take most b products and like process them into their output stuff. So I started casing three copper, uh, six copper ingots. Sturdy casing, I should have one more and some glass. And by the way, you guys keep asking me, how do I copy recipes so fast from any eye? You basically get to the recipe screen and shift left click the question mark and magic. 
However, bear in mind it only for me it only works on the crafting table. On the project table it doesn't work, and probably other crafting grids might not work as well. However, I do know that on the fabricators from Zycraft, which is hopefully will soon be upon us, uh, it also works as well. It's actually built to copy recipes from uh, NEI. Okay, so it should just take power from my existing power network and process the combs into good stuff, cocoa beans and beeswax. What can I do with beeswax? Does it say? Okay, can I turn it into water, water, pipe waterproofing, helmet cast, other casts, what are those casts? can make uh, capsules out of them, which is actually useful. can apparently make torches out of them, which is weird. And can create candles. I can create the scented paneling, which is what I need as a part of the um, bigger alviaries. But I do need a pollen and some royal jelly as well. And God knows how you get that. I actually have no clue. I think royal jelly is just a product of one of a spe specific type of bee, and just got a rocky comb. That's actually interesting. What can you get out of rocky comb? What can you get from one of those? Uh, honey drop and beeswax. Okay, nothing too fancy. No diamonds, at least not yet. Okay, beeswax and some cocoa beans. Okay, let's start exploring also uh, getting different type of bees as well. I'd like to actually get some honey drops first, and I think these Valiant Queens will not provide me with any. I should try and get different type of bees here. To get a larger varieties of bees gives me a larger variety of end products by the bees. Again, as I said before, beginning in the previous episode, most bee products won't be as useful for me right now. But some of them actually make my life a little bit more convenient. For example, uh, this beeswax. Again, if the process is completely automated, this is even perfect. Uh, it's actually quite awesome because it gives me a better and different system to try and create. Um... That's it? Just a princess? Okay. It gives me basically an easier way to make capsules and cans, which is quite awesome. Instead of wasting uh, tin or other more valuable and less um, depletable resources because bees basically just just, just keep uh, re breeding more and more and more and just, just endless pretty much so there is no damage in doing that okay i'm gonna try and find some more bees hopefully some good ones okay didn't actually find any except for this guy so not very lucky run, but actually came back. I wanted to see what's the damage on the Vs in the area. Okay, it's still it's actually the same chunk, which with my house. Um, it actually doesn't seem that bad to be honest, but those frames seems to be wear out faster than I'd expected them to. I actually like to get an LVR as soon as possible because on LVRs you don't need the frames. The frames. Uh, obviously, as you can, as you've seen, they're optional. I don't need them. The bees created products even before I added frames to the mix, but uh, they're optional. And when you're using an aviary, you don't even have the option because it does. You don't need to, or at least as far as I know, you don't have the option because again, you don't need to. Okay, I'm trying to look here. What combs give me honey drops, which I really would like to get as soon as possible to actually be able to bealize my bees. There are a lot of combs which I don't really recognize. Um, otherworldly comb, occult comb, oily comb. A lot of new bees that probably are added by other um, mods, such as Th Thumbcraft and what the hell? This there is a type of bee that can generate redstone. No, what? Whoa! Radioactive comb gives me uranium. Clay dust. Rubber, <laughs> coffee powder, slime ball, a Kelvin drop. You know what? I've changed my mind. Whoa, pulverized obsidian and lead. 
Electrum blend, brass blend. I've, I I'm going to take back what I said. Those apparently B products are a lot more useful than I thought. Um, maybe should have lapis, and maybe should have actually started um, dealing with bees a lot faster. Emeralds, rubies, more emerald, diamonds. Wow, really? Coal dust, a maroon drop. Prussian drop. A lot of. Oh, I guess those are something to do with the liquid colors. They are liquid colors now. Yeah, Zycraft added. The Zycraft. Zycraft adds a ton. There you go, a squeezer. Yeah, Zycraft adds a ton of uh, stuff related to colored liquids and basically everything colors. So it's actually. I guess this adds that. Yeah, definitely awesome stuff. This just looking at this screen, what can you do with bees? Just made me a lot more interested in bees. For some reason, these guys are not happy. Maybe I don't give them the right, uh, right place to grow and do their stuff. Probably related to the fact that I don't know what they want because I can't bealize them because I don't have any bee drop. Keep complaining, circle of life. Okay, anyway, uh, this episode has been dealing a lot with breeding. Let's actually do, let's see how is my uranium cells breeder doing. That's actually the official term. That's how it's called, a breeder. Oops, actually took it down because right clicked with wand. Oh, wrong sign now. Uh, let's see how it's doing. Didn't explode yet. It's good. As you can see, none of my components died. And it's actually fifth way through. I think by the time... It's gonna get to a maximum cell count. Actually, all those cells probably are gonna run out. So this this pattern, this design is not the most efficient way to breed new cells, but it's actually also producing uh, energy at the same time. So this is why I prefer it more over something which will be more efficient, but uh, I don't know. Just prefer it to be this way. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna look slightly more into bees off screen. I'm gonna keep a close watch on my red power frame. I'm still not declaring it as fully working. It's still working, but again, it's always working until it's get it's get broken again. And there you go. I stopped collecting. Oh no, I'm still collecting. Okay. And that's. I don't think that's the speed of a quarry. A build craft quarry. No, no, that's the speed of a red power quarry. Let's actually have a quick look. See if it's broken or not. Yeah, it seems to be fine, actually. For some reason it did not go forward. Why did it not go forward? Ooh. Okay, something with the logic isn't working the way it should. Okay, I'm gonna look further into this, uh, see what's what, and hopefully fix the problem. This is actually annoying. That means the circuit that I thought should work isn't actually working, and that's bad. Okay, anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.